Hey YouTube, my name is Garth. And my name is Shelby. And we're gonna give you a studio tour of Myth 3.0. Hey everybody and welcome to our new shop. So I'm in front of the camera, Shelby's behind the camera, and we're gonna show you our new space here. It's very similar to layout to as uh, our old shop, and that's kind of by design and uh, wor worked out really well for us. So right here on, on the upper spot of the landing here, we have our trusty little ripper. This is a Conso 230. Uh, this is a, a high speed garment machine that we use to uh, sew up our liners. Made in Japan, probably in the 80s. Beautiful machine. Right to the left of that's our hardware station and uh, our clicker press dies, hammers, cutting, things of that nature, uh, punching. Again, this is a pretty familiar layout. We, we uh, worked pretty good in our, our last shop like that. We did uh, change the uh, location of the hardware versus right in front of the uh, punching station. But uh, we know for a fact that there's no plumbing or anything weird here that our sheetrock anchors are going to go into. So that's why we did it that way. <laughs> and then all of our punching tools um, right to the right here. So it'll work out pretty good. So granite hammers, clicker press. All the dies are below there. Right to the left of that is our, our uh, cantankerous uh, Conso 389. This is a uh, seven inch post bed dual needle machine. Uh, pretty much just for French seams, just for pretty really. It uh, doesn't really like to sew thin materials no matter what you do. So the thicker the material, uh, the better off we are on that one. This is made in made Japan by Seiko. And uh, one of these days I'll love that machine too. But right now it's not my friend. <laughs> and around the corner here is our, uh, our Geonite uh, Swing Away 16 by 20 uh, heat press. This is the K20S model and it is like 20 tons. That thing is the heaviest beast in the universe. It's a, it's a big one. Made in America, by the way. And uh, so moving right along here to kind of the workstation here. So that we have this same table that we used in our last studio to where I'll be working on this side and Shelby has uh, some space over there and we utilize these tools here. We share these together and um, uh, I can just pivot my chair around here and I'll have access to both of these machines, which is really convenient. As before, we had them laid out in a linear fashion, but now we have them more in a cell. So we have the, uh, the Juki 1508 here on this side and we mainly use this one for construction. And then we can swing around to the other side and then uh, have access to our top stitcher. And this is a Conso 255 RV-2. Love that machine. Also made by Seiko. Probably late 70s, early 80s era. She's an old girl. All right, swinging right around over to this side is the uh, our high post machine this is a seiko as well this is a 17 inch high post machine um left only so you have full access to the to the left side it's walking foot obviously and um, we do a lot of different projects on this mainly sewing um a lot of uh bottoms on our bags so this has become an invaluable tool and we call this jose canseco little funny backstory about this is uh, Jose Canseco, for those of you who don't know, as a uh, Major League Baseball player, very tall uh, Major League Baseball player, so high post, Canseco, you know, uh -huh, play on words, yeah. 
That was Shelby's idea. And then right over to the uh, left of that machine is Shelby's favorite machine. And this is our latest, latest machine. This is a BSC series. This is a brand new one for Seiko. Just came out a couple years ago. And it's a uh, uh, very narrow diameter cylinder arm machine. And it really has a really wide throat. So you can really get a, a deep project in there. This is a great machine. We really love it. So it's all free over here on, the, on this side of the machine. There's no table here, no obstructions or anything like that. It's mounted right on the edge. And if you pan down there, you can see how the me uh, mechanisms work. So basically on the bottom here, there, this is a uh, two by six that's bolted to the bottom. And then the pedal is up here onto this little bar, which ultimately controls the servo motor. So that's, how I ordered this machine. So this was totally free. The cylinder arm machine, in my opinion, with a with a U-shaped table, and we had one, it sucked. And basically what would happen is we'd be uh, top stitching a bag or something, and then it would come down and hit the table and then wind up uh, skipping a stitch or it would stretch the bag and uh, it was terrible. One day I took a um, our old machine I took a uh, sawzall and I cut, I shored up the machine with some two by fours and I took a sawzall and I cut, cut it off. And Shelby wasn't happy about that, but <laughs> it happened. So another remarkable thing about this one and a lot of the, the a lot of the other machines are, are uh, including this as well, is this is, they call this, Seiko calls this a climbing device. And essentially what that does is by the turn of a, a dial here, you can, um, you can control the uh, the amount the uh, amount of uh, height that your machine will walk just by the turning a dial versus adjusting a mechanism. Like so, the rest of our machines, we just leave it at the max that the machine will walk. But this one, we can adjust it on the fly. Killer feature. All right, now we're in our cutting room here. This room is a little dark, but uh, so we're gonna have to up upgrade the lighting in here to make it a little more usable for videos and, and to see in the evenings. Um, but uh, here's our skydiving machine. This is a Cowboy CB801, I think is the model. But these are all the same. We've talked about these and we have other videos on our, on our YouTube channel that shows you exactly how to use these. We may move this over here to this side because Shelby loves this natural light and she might use it for photography and whatever else the case may be. And over here on this side is just a simple piece of three quarter inch birch plywood and it has this four by eight gorilla mat on the top for to uh, cut on. And below that we have, uh, this is actually an old, old drafting cabinet where they would keep D-sized drawing uh, prints in here. That's how they store that kind of stuff. So now we just keep all of our metal templates in there. Up on top we're storing some vegetable tan leathers, tools. This one room's not quite finished yet, but it'll get there. And this closet is where we're stashing raw materials for the moment. Uh, one of the other closets we're hiding some threads and things like that. So space is usable now and we're ready to go. So thanks for joining us on our little tour here. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. This is just me saying hi since I was behind the camera the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> hi! Uh, bye! Bye!